Hello, everybody. My name is uh, Dr. Zhang. I'm an internal medicine physician. Uh, I also had more than 10 years experience in mitochondria research. So I believe that uh, mitochondria hold the key for the cure of cancer. The reason that cancer always grew back after successful chemotherapy is because of cancer stem cells. I believe I have found a solution to eliminate these cancer stem cells. As a result, we can finally cure the cancer. Let's begin. Why we cannot cure cancer? The answer to this question lies in cancer stem cells. So most cancer cells are differentiated, which means that uh, they simply divide for a few generations, then they die. Uh, these cells are also killed off by chemotherapy. But within the mass of the tumor, there are few stem cells. These stem cells are essentially immortal. They can survive any harsh environment. That is why the cancer can grow back after chemotherapy. So if they are that strong, do they have any vulnerability? Yes, location. So remember, uh, when the chemotherapy are given, a lot of cancer cells will die. This process creates a very hostile environment for cell survival and uh, they're creating lots of oxygen free radicals and acidic environment and disruption of tissue architecture and a shortage of oxygen and nutrients. So think about this. Cancer stem cells live in this environment. They have to cope with this harsh environment in order to survive. Understanding how these cells survive will help us design a treatment to eliminate them and finally create a cure for cancer. The key component in cancer stem cell survival lies in their mitochondria. I believe mitochondria can be a liability to cancer stem cells when the chemotherapy is given. So mitochondria enter the cell a billion years ago. They become the powerhouse of the cell. They are literally like a furnace and they use oxygen and they burn fuels to create ATP. But their interior is also like a furnace. It is very hot. It also contains dangerous material within their mitochondrial inner membrane. When the mitochondrial membrane is breached, the cell dies. Uh, since the mitochondria can survive the cell death and pick up by neighboring cells, their survival instinct contradict with the interest of host cells. Chemotherapy has created such an environment that a single stem cell sitting in the debris of dying cells. This creates extra oxidative stress to the mitochondria. Apparently, the cancer cells can survive this. Otherwise, they'll be dead already. So what are the measures taken by stem cells to survive? So figure them out can help us eliminate cancer stem cells and cure cancer. Let's look at the strategies used by cancer stem cells to regulate their mitochondria. Uh, some cancer stem cells just don't use their mitochondria altogether. The relationship between mitochondria and cancer was first recognized about 100 years ago by Dr. Warburg. He discovered that the cancer cells tend to use glucose fermentation instead of mitochondria. They just make a few ATPs, but they're relatively stable. Glucose is fermented into lactic acid and eliminated from the cell. In this way, cancer cells can completely bypass the mitochondria respiration. The finding uh, lead to the invention of a PET scan, which we still use for today for cancer diagnosis. In later research, it found out that uh, cancer stem cells uh, use glucose fermentation to escape cell death. This kind of cancer are extremely resistant to chemotherapy. So other cancer stem cells still use their mitochondria. So let's look at the strategies for cancer stem cells to survive the chemotherapy. With targeted chemotherapy, medications are given to target cancer specific marker. As a result, they are more selective for cancer with less side effects for other organs. When the cancer architecture is destroyed, cancer stem cells within the cancer mass are in danger of dying. In order to prevent this, they must protect themselves from their own mitochondria. And the literature has shown several ways the cancer stem cell can do to survive. The first is that they shut down their mitochondrial respiration. 
So the mitochondria are cooled down, avoiding the bridge of mitochondria in the membrane. The second is that they can eat up their damaged mitochondria in a process called the mitophagy. The third process involves the protein against apoptosis. Literally, they patch up their mitochondrial membrane. So that can prevent the triggering apoptosis process. There are also multiple other mechanisms they can use, and all of this involve mitochondria. So this process allows the stressed cancer stem cell to repair themselves, caused by chemotherapy, and uh, later proliferate again to populate the cancer mass. Now we know the stem cell vulnerability. So can we use that to eliminate them? How? So current research uh, focuses on sending toxic drugs into the mitochondria and uh, making cells vulnerable to apoptosis. But this will just be another chemotherapy drug that is not even selected for cancer cells, let alone cure cancer stem cells. So my proposal is pre-treat the patient before chemotherapy so the cancer stem cell will not be able to regulate their mitochondria. So they will die together with the rest of the cancer cells after chemotherapy. What about the, the side effect and toxicity? Uh, fortunately, suppressing this survival mechanism do not have severe side effects. They only make the cells vulnerable to apoptosis. So the effect is exaggerated in cancer stem cells as they are localized in an environment that has been made very hostile by the targeted chemotherapy. The treatment regimen has seven-day stepwise process leading to chemotherapy. This treatment will prevent cancer stem cells from shutting down mitochondrial metabolism and weakening their survival ability and uh, their ability to regulate their mitochondria. The, the end result is that a stem cell will die with the rest of the cancer cells after targeted chemotherapy. I plan to perform a clinical study using an animal model. However, I cannot do this alone uh, due to high cost. Therefore, I need your help to fund this research. I cannot accept any funding from people who are currently being treated for cancer. I believe this would not be ethical. Please contact me through the following email and uh, if you are willing to provide an investment and take a stake of the research. Thank you for listening.